Wait a moment. This isn't a furry visual novel. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Echo, Carl's Path. So guys, please sit back and enjoy while I entertain you, and let's jump right in to the spooky time. Alright, alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. <clears throat> Alright. <clears throat> Alright, there we go. Alright, through bleary eyes, I look up at Carl, just able to make out the curve of his horns. C Carl? I hear movement at the doorway, and I glance in that direction to find Jenna standing there, hackles raised, teeth bared. Jenna? Before I know what exactly is going on, Jenna sprints across the room and jumps on the bed. Carl doesn't even have time to return around before she snatches him up by the horns and yanks his head back violently. The ram lets out a choking sound as he's dragged back and thrown to the floor. Jenna jumps off the bed after him. From the sounds of it, she lands on him. What follows is a series of thuds and smacks. Weakly, I pull myself to the foot of the bed, still completely disoriented. I knew you I knew it, you motherfucking piece of shit! What I see is Jenna sitting on Carl's back, swinging her fist into his head while the ram tries to cover up. You haven't changed at all! Jenna, stop! I roll off the bed, confused as to why I'm so weak. Pain shoots up my leg again, but this time I barely notice it. There's something around Jenna, something big and black, like a shadow, making her look much bigger than she actually is. Her fists swing and hit Carl with a force I didn't think she was capable of. Then she grabs Carl by the horns again and yanks back before slamming his face back again into the floor. Jenna! I lunge forward, trying to put myself between the two of them. Underneath me, Carl has gone limp. Just like Jenna, there's something black and shadowy around him as well, but it's fading, moving away. Jenna's still trying to get at Carl, reaching around me and snarling in my ear, a sound that makes my fur stand on end, and then she's gone. I look to my left and see Jenna being drawn back to Raven, back by Raven, his eyes wide with shock. What are you doing? Jenna struggles in the husky's grasp. I saw him! He was trying to fuck the otter! The otter? Jenna, stop! He was helping me! Raven continues to try and pull Jenna towards the door, but she continues to struggle. I was having a nightmare! Jenna's struggling, losing some of its vigor. But she continues to snarl in Carl's direction. Raven, please get her out of here! The shadow around Jenna seems to shrink, and her face shows some doubt as she stares at the crumpled form of Carl. After a moment, she seems to let, she seems to let the husky lead her, from, to lead her from the room, and I hear soothing tones from Raven as he leads her down the stairs. I turn back to Carl, who was in... Who has his arms around his face, face? Who has his arms around his head, face still buried in the ground? After a while, I see his shoulders heaving with sobs. And gently, I pull one of his arms back, and he looks up at me. This time, I recognize the face. Hmm. What possessed Jenna? I sit next to Carl on the bed, mopping up his face with some with his bloodied button-up shirt. He sits there silently, looking at his hands while I work. At least nothing's broken. Dude, what happened? I'm not sure if he's talking about what happened with Jenna or just everything. I've been asking that same question since we got here. He looks at his hands again. I felt... Uh, I felt different. I sit back and look him over, satisfied with having cleaned up most of his face. You were acting different, too. Like, I feel like I knew everything. I knew what I was doing. You were acting really confident. I agree and set his bloody shirt off to the side. When I look back at him, he seems so sad and beaten down that I have to hug him. Dude, you're gonna make me start crying again. His voice cracks, but he hugs back anyway. I'm just glad you're back. I feel like I was talking to a stranger. Carl leans against me and sighs. I don't know if I'm glad, though. It's just like I came back from a huge high. I rub his shoulder for a while before I venture, to venture forward with my guess. Was it James? I, I don't know. <clears throat> Maybe. Carl looks at his hands again, like he's questioning if they're even his. I just felt like I knew what I wanted, and when I, things didn't go my way, I thought that I thought that they would, I thought they would, I get, I thought they would, I if things didn't go the way I thought they would, I'd get really pissed. He's silent for a while. I imagine contemplating what he'd just gone through. Jenna isn't really acting like herself either. Carl looks up at that. Yeah, I feel like whatever was in me, whatever it really it is, really hates what Jenna's doing for some reason. Carl looks around the room at the room, scanning it with his dark green eyes. I feel like all this is some kind of a mental fight between James and whatever else is fighting against him. He looks back down at his hands. That's why we have to do all this. He falls back into silence and I don't ask any more questions, wanting to let him rest a bit. There's one nagging thought that comes to my mind, though. 
this is kind of stupid, but what happened back in the mansion? You know, that thing between us? He looks up at me, and I feel my face flush, looking away. I guess I'm wondering if any of that was real. I mean, if it was really you feeling that way. Carl doesn't say anything, so I'm forced to look up at him. When I do, he has a sad sort of smile on his face. Dude, I think that was the only part of me that was real. Despite where we are, I, despite everything that's happening, that somehow makes me incredibly happy. Happy enough to lean forward and kiss him. He kisses back, and while it's barely more than a peck, it has my entire body feeling warm. He puts his own arm around me after I pull back and I rest my head on his shoulder. I feel like it's gonna try to come back, though. I look at him. What, James? Whatever it is, I can already feel it. It's like it's on the edge of my mind. Do you think you can fight it? Carl sighs, then looks at me. Should I? What do you mean? I mean, it made me feel amazing, like I'd do anything. Maybe we need that. I frown. I don't know. Not only that, but I feel like I knew what to do. It might save us. He stares back into my eyes. I know it's not really me, but it'll probably only be for the last... For, probably only be for the time that we're here. I look away, thinking. Then I'll be back to my old self. He squeezes my shoulder. But it's important to me what you think. We're in this together. Let it help us. I say, yeah, I'd say let it help us. That, I'd say, is a big fucking choice. Hmm. Uh, uh, okay, let it help us. Okay, so... Alright, so I'm gonna make a save right here. Okay, alright. It's gonna be the alternate save. Alright. Well, I don't exactly like the idea of whatever it is changing Carl, changing Carl, influencing him. It might be our only choice. I think, I think you should tr probably let it. Yeah? Carl looks at me and I can tell he's a little surprised. Maybe, maybe it's, it's basically trying to help us, right? And if it's James, he knows exactly what we need to do. Yeah! Carl sounds a little reluctant, but I can tell he's starting to agree with me. And it'll only be for the, for, for the time that we're here. He just wants to show us his story, then we can get out. I don't mention that a more confident Carl will make everything easier as well. I just had to make sure that he and Jenna were carefully kept separate. Either way, we are in this together. I'll make sure things don't go get out of hand between you and it. We sit there for a while, Carl absorbing what I just said. It's clear that, whoever, that whatever is influencing Carl and probably Jenna is powerful and we had to be careful. Whatever he decides, I just pray it's the right decision. Seems like a big choice was made. I wake up groggily, my head throbbing a bit from laying it on the stiff pillow. Like the last time I woke up, it takes me a while to realize where I am. And just like that, I get a sinking feeling in my stomach when I realize where that is. I lay on my side, staring at the wall in front of me, watching shadows dance along the log bumps. It's depressing, though not as much as the last time. At some point, I guess I realize that there wasn't much I could do. Just go with it and hope something comes of it. At least there seemed to be a goal in the mind of whatever had control of this. Whatever it was. Suddenly, I feel an arm slide over my hip and I stiffen. Carl breathes into the back of my neck. What's up? I shiver as he breathes against my neck. Nothing, just thinking. About? A bunch of things. Carl suddenly squeezes my ass, hard. I yelp and jump as he chuckles. Dude, what the hell? I whisper, trying to keep my voice down for fear of Raven and Jenna hearing, especially Jenna. Carl doesn't say anything, choosing to nuzzle the fur on the back of my neck while he grinds his hips against me. I guess it's okay we sort of made things official last night. Still, his behavior feels like it's coming out of nowhere. Are you okay? He chuckles. Yeah, everything's fine now that I've got your tight butt here in front of me. I turn my head and squint back at him. Are you acting like this because of James or because you're just trying to be more confident? Carl just gazes back at me with half-lidded eyes before he starts wagging his eyebrows. I turn away again, away again and lay my head on the pillow. Well, I think you're trying too hard. Just let it come now. Nah! Carl dives in again and starts nuzzling my neck, running his hands over my body. I writhe and try not to laugh, but it's no use, and soon I'm letting out full-on guffaws. Well, wait, stop, stop! <laughs> he doesn't let up, though, and it's not until we hear voices drifting up from downstairs that we do stop. It sounds like Raven, but I'm pretty sure he's talking to Jenna. I rolled to my back in Carl's arms and turned my head to, turn my head to him. We gotta keep it down! I'm reminded of our situation when I see some flakes of blood around Carl's nose and the big splotches on his shirt. I guess we're being a little loud. Yeah, how's your nose? Carl automatically raises a hand to touch his nose. Meh, I'm fine. Alright. I lay there in silence for a few seconds, feeling like the moment is kind of ruined. I look again at the walls, remembering that we, use, that we should be looking for something instead of messing around like this. 
Looking, uh, <clears throat> looking for something? Not sure. Hey, we should be finding something, right? Hmm? Carl lazily starts drawing circles on my chest with a finger. I mean, didn't that ghost ancestor, whatever it was, tell you we needed to find stuff? Carl rubs his nose. Yeah, in the last place we were in, at least. I guess it would be the same for this place, right? Unless it was that it was what we already burned up. Yeah. Carl lays there, quietly thinking. Well, I think I might try to go, go look downstairs. You want to stay up here and look around? I guess. I want to get the other two to start looking, too. The threat of Jenna hangs heavy in the air, and the way we're both obviously avoiding it makes it all the heavier. What about your ankle? I flex it around. The twin's a lot less sharp now, though the stiffness feels even worse. I think I'm okay. Let me try it out. Okay. Carl holds on to me for a little while longer, giving my neck one last nuzzle before letting me go. I sit up and swing my legs over the side of the bed. Pressing my foot to the floor, the twinge that runs through my ankle is minuscule. Standing up, I'm able to put some pressure on it before it hurts too much. The problem is that I can't bend the joint at all, leaving me with an obvious and lumbering limp. I think I'm okay. Sure, you sure you don't want to ride on my back down the stairs at least? I consider it, but I don't really want him and Jenna anywhere near each other. <sighs> Especially after what she might have just heard now. She might have heard just now. Nah, I want to test it out a bit more. I turn my head to look back at Carl. His brows are raised at me like he doesn't really think I can do it. I'll call you if I need any help, okay? Carl purses his lips. All right. The trip down the stairs is ponderous and awkward. I'm probably loud, too, because when I reach the bottom, I find both Raven and Jenna already staring at me. H hey. Hey. Jenna doesn't say anything, continuing to watch me. We stare at each other awkwardly for a bit before she finally moves her head to look down at my leg. How's your leg? Uh, oh, it's all right. Uh, a bit stiff, though. I grasp at the opportunity to talk about anything other than what we're obviously avoiding. I think I should be able to walk normally, maybe in a few days. Hopefully in a few days we'll be out of here so you can do that. Yeah. Jenna is definitely not herself right now. Her eyes are vacant, dull, and... It's hard to explain, but they lack the mischievous and compassionate look that I'm used to seeing. Her voice is weird, too. It's deeper, more husky. We'll be out of here by then. Raven says it with a grin as he leans back in the chair he's sitting in. Yeah, actually, I wanted to talk to you guys about that. About what? About how to get out of here. And how do we do that? Well, we, um, I was thinking that the last time we were able to unlock the door, all we had to do was find that letter. Raven blinks at me. So we find a letter? Or something like that. We just need to find something, I think. We did find something. I look over at Jenna. Huh? I said we did find something. Carl burned it. Oh, well, I don't think Carl burned it. He did. I pause. But there's got to be something else, or maybe whatever's doing this has a way of putting something else here. The others don't say anything. I don't know, but we can't just sit here. Looking around is the least we, the least we can do. Where is Carl? Jenna's standing up now, looking at the ceiling. Faintly, I can hear the clopping of Carl's hooves on the soft wood. He's looking around upstairs. Jenna continues to look up at the ceiling, her face stony. Let's start in this room. Raven stands up and starts walking along the, along the wall, looking up and down the logs, prodding at the spaces between. Jenna's still looking up at the ceiling, and I worry that she's going to try and go upstairs. Hey, Jenna, can you help me look around the kitchen? Jenna looks back at me. Huh? My ankle still kind of hurts. It'd be nice to be able to lean on someone if I need to walk far, like, to the kitchen. Jenna pauses before moving over to my side. She stands there stoically, and I awkwardly wrap an arm around her shoulders. <sniffs> Thanks. Yeah. We amble slowly to the kitchen. Jenna stops in the middle of the room and waits. I guess I'll start with the cabinets? My voice goes up at the end, like I'm asking a question. Jenna doesn't say anything, so I stumble away from her, again awkwardly, before finding support on the wooden pantry. I hesitantly start opening some of the cupboards, feeling a lot less into my idea than I was just a few minutes earlier. Jenna stares out the window. So, are you okay? She finally looks back at me, frowning. I'm fine. Why? You're being really... distant. Do you need me to stand next to you? No, I mean, you seem like you're really not here mentally. I'm sorry. I open another pantry door to set a glass set a glass of mug to a set of glass mugs. Is it something to do with Carl? I know that Jenna's going through something similar to what Carl is. I just have no idea what's doing it or why. Unlike Carl, though, Jenna's thing isn't helping us. I don't have a problem with Carl. I mean, what you did yesterday? 
I just have a problem with the way he acts. He can do a lot if he puts his mind to it. It takes me a moment to realize that she's talking about what happened before all this. So you attacked him. What? No, that was something else. I turn around and finally see something familiar about Jenna. Some life in her eyes. Maybe all I have to do is talk about stuff before this whole warp to go before this before this whole warp to ghost dimension. I mean, he tries. He just has problems. Shouldn't a psychology major know that? Jenna looks away from me. I guess, but I'm not a therapist. So what? So I don't know. No, I mean, shouldn't anyone have sympathy? I'd have a little more sympathy if he'd actually tried and get help. He has, but it's not that easy. Again, I don't feel like I should be explaining this to someone who has four years of psychology under her belt. I tried to get help, but I didn't feel better for years. Jenna doesn't say anything. Carl's problems didn't really start until his first year of college. I keep... I keep... Oh, excuse me. I keep pulling open cupboards, my heart sinking a, a little more each time there's nothing inside. I mean, yeah, he had problems before, but it's only getting worse for him. Well, it doesn't matter what I think about Carl right now. We're trying to find a way out of here, and screwing around isn't going to help. Jenna says it in such a way that I feel like it was supposed to be pointed. There's a little doubt in my mind that she heard us messing around upstairs. I sigh and reach up to pull open the last cabinet. He's not what you think he is. It's so quiet and deep, I'm not sure that it's Jenna that said it. I turn around, but she's already on the other side of the room, standing next to the opposite set of pantries. Did you say something? She doesn't respond. I wonder who or what is possessing Jenna right now. I stare at her for another few seconds before slowly turning back around. The fur on the back of my neck prickles at the idea of turning my back on her. It. Why do those damn ghosts have to be so subtle and cryptic? It's... If that's what it is, of course. It seemed like James had no trouble telling Carl about the whole clue-finding crap. Why couldn't they just tell him, or even Jenna, right now instead of just creeping me out? The kitchen isn't very big, so I run out of things to search, search through pretty quickly. I skip, the, I, skip around, I skip the area around the window, though. Not having forgotten what happened yesterday. Yesterday? I don't know how to keep track of time in this place. I look back, I look back over at Jenna, who's still in the same place, staring at the pantry. The thought that maybe I, fi I find the thought that maybe I, I myself could be possessed momentarily passes through my mind. For some reason, I doubt it, even though I'm not sure why. I don't really feel like I'm of interest to whatever it is that's doing this. At least, not directly. I look around the room, at the ceiling, and at the floor. It's a small place, but there are so many different nooks and crannies in this place that it could be in a million places. Maybe we should assign halves. I pause as I hear loud clopping coming down from the stairs. Jenna pauses, too, her ears perked. What the fuck is that ram doing? Sure enough, the ram suddenly comes swinging around and opening to, swinging around the, around the opening to the stairs. I shake my head vigorously at him, but he ignores me. Jenna stands there, stiffly, arms folded tightly. Hey, Carl, weren't you looking around upstairs? Carl stands there in the doorway, looking at me with a grin. I know where it is. My eyes widen. Really? Upstairs? He ignores me again, instead walking around me to the end of the room. He halts in front of the wooden, the wood-burning stove. Carl, what are you doing? Again, he doesn't say anything, instead kneeling to the twist the metal handles on the stove door before letting it fall open. Jenna walks closer, but is sure to keep her, but is sure to keep her distance. Her arms still folded. All right, guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. It's pretty late. I'm tired. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.